All right, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to review all unit circle values um, with a bunch of problems here. We are in the second half of section 5.2, so 5.2b, and um, what you might want to do is get your unit circle out and put that on your desk. Um, I know eventually the unit circle should be up in your brain and up in your memory, but right now it might be real helpful to uh, be looking at that document. So if you can get that out, that would be very helpful. We're going to be uh, looking at a bunch of problems that involve the special angles that we're memorizing from the unit circle. The first problem, I'd like to compare what the sine of pi is versus what the cosecant of pi is. So we really need to know where pi is first. So I'm going to draw a quick little unit circle because I'm a visual person. You might be looking at your picture. Pi is right here. And that ordered pair right there is the point negative 1, 0. So if we're talking about negative 1, 0, I instantly now know that my sine value is 0. Because I memorize that the cosine is the x-coordinate and the sine is the y-coordinate. So the sine of pi is 0. And I'm finished with that part. The cosecant, I do need to remember the relationship between the sine and the cosecant. And they are reciprocals. That means if I find the sine, I can just take the reciprocal of that, and now I have the cosecant. So I'm just going to flip the 0 around, and I've got 1 over 0. We all know that, of course, we can never divide by 0. So this is a does not exist, or just the null set. We use DNE to represent does not exist, or we can use the null set. That is not a theta, of course. That is a null set. So the sine of pi exists, and it is 0. The cosecant of pi, unfortunately, does not exist. It is undefined. OK, let's uh, move over to cosine. Cosine of 60 degrees versus the secant of 60 degrees. Well, we need to know where 60 degrees is. So either you're looking on your document, or you're drawing a quick little picture, and 60 degrees is right here. I like to tuck it right on in close to the y-axis part so I can see my distances clearly. I know that it's just a little distance, little distance to get there on the x, and then it's a long distance to get up there on the y, both positive because we're in the first quadrant. So there's the ordered pair for 60 degrees. If I'm talking about cosine, now I know that I'm talking about the 1 half, the first coordinate. The x-coordinate, that's, that's what the cosine is. So the cosine answer to 60 degrees is 1 half. Secant, again, we need to remember the relationship between cosine and secant. And these are also reciprocals, which means if I can find either one of these values, all I have to do is flip that value upside down, and I will have the other value. So I'm going to take the 1 half, and I'm going to take the reciprocal, and then I have the secant. I don't really like 2 over 1. Of course, we'll just write it as 2. Not too bad, not too bad. Our final problem on this page, we're going to look at the sine of 5 pi over 6 versus the cosine of 5 pi over 6 versus the tangent of 5 pi over 6. So obviously, we need to figure out where is 5 pi over 6. And as soon as somebody says anything pi over 6, I instantly know that I'm talking about my cat whiskers. I know that my orange chunk is all the 5 pi over 6, and they kind of look like cat whiskers. I know that there's 1 pi over 6, and then 5 pi over 6, and then 7 pi over 6, and then 11 pi over 6. I've memorized the unit circle, and you're getting closer and closer to doing that as well. So when I say 5 pi over 6, I know that I'm talking about this one right here. It might be helpful to list what that ordered pair actually is, and that is long on the x direction. So, and, and negative, because I'm going to the left. So negative square root of 3 over 2. And then yeah, it just does a little bit up, eh, a little 1 half. So there's my ordered pair. So now I know, if I'm looking for the sine, well, there it is. I'm not looking that hard. It's right there, the y-coordinate. The sine will be the y-coordinate, so we're talking about 1 half. If we're talking about the cosine now. The cosine, well, that's the x-coordinate. Because they're alphabetical order, C and then S, X and then Y. So the cosine is negative, square root of 3 over 2. Yay. Now we're talking about the tangent. Well, I 
taught you a trick on the unit circle when we did the last tutorial. The tangent of 5 pi over 6, because we're talking about a 6, I know that it's the one with the two 3s. It's either going to be square root of 3 over 3, oops, that is not a 3, or it's going to be negative square root of 3 over 3. We do need to know which one it would be, but it's the one that has two 3s in it, because 3 plus 3 is 6, and that's what I've memorized for my tangent values. So 5 pi over 6 is over here in the second quadrant, and I know that tangents have to be negative in the second quadrant because one of the coordinates is negative and the other coordinate is positive, and a positive divided by a negative would be negative. So I know that the answer has to be negative square root of 3 over 3 not positive. If you do not understand this trick or you do not learn this trick, this efficient way to remember it, this is how you're going to have to do this problem. Let's erase all this. You need to remember then that the tangent of course is the sine of, in this case 5 pi over 6, divided by the cosine of 5 pi over 6. You would need to know that the sine of 5 pi over 6 is what we just calculated, 1 half and that the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is what we just calculated, negative square root of 3 over 2. You're going to need to know that when you're dividing fractions, of course, you're multiplying by reciprocals. So this becomes 1 half times negative 2 over square root of 3, just the reciprocal of that. The 2's would cancel out, and I'd have negative 1 over the square root of 3. And then when I rationalize, I would need to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and I'd have negative 1, excuse me, negative square root of 3 divided by 3. Yay! Do you really want to have to do all this work every single time, or would it just be easier to remember that since there's a pi over 6, it's going to be the tangent value that has the two 3s? That's it. I choose this. Okay, let's look at our final two problems. Um, the situations here require us to do something with the angles first, because we're looking for the tangent of negative 11 pi over 4. Now, this is obviously not one of our special 17 angles that we're memorizing. I really only want you to memorize those 17, not infinite angles. So we have to do something with this negative 11 pi over 4. And we learned that in a previous lesson, that we can always add or subtract 2 pi to get to any coterminal angle. Now, perhaps what we would be doing in this case is adding or subtracting 8 pi over 4 because we are dealing with the fourths, and we have to have the same denominator. But 8 over 4, of course, is 2. This is a negative angle, so maybe what I'm going to do is come out here and start adding 8 pi over 4 until we get to an angle that is more helpful. Negative 11 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4 gives me negative 3 pi over 4. Still not very helpful because I haven't memorized that. So I'm going to add another 8 pi over 4. I can do this all day long if I want to. Negative 3 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4 gives me 5 pi over 4, and that is an angle that rings a bell. That's one of our special angles that we're memorizing. So really now what I'm talking about is the tangent of 5 pi over 4. That's possibly a better problem because it deals with an angle that I've memorized. Now, where is 5 pi over 4? Well, as soon as somebody says 5 pi over 4, or um, any pi over 4, I know that I'm talking about the one in the middle, right? Which one? Well, here's 1 pi over 4, and here's 3 pi over 4, and here's 5 pi over 4, and here's 7 pi. Oh, here's 5 pi over 4. I found it. So there's 5 pi over 4, and I know that the tangent of the ones in the middle are ones. It just depends on if it's a positive one or a negative one, and I know in the third quadrant, tangent must be positive because it's a negative divided by a negative. The tangent will always be positive in these two quadrants, first and third, but it'll have to be negative in the second and the fourth because one of the coordinates is negative. So my answer is one. The one in the middle because of the pi over four. And our final problem, cosecant of 29 pi over 3. Okay, we've got a couple things going on here because I don't memorize many of my cosecant values. In fact, I don't memorize any of them. I memorize my sine values and then realize that I can just take the reciprocal to get cosecant. And the other problem is well, 29 pi over 3, that's not very helpful either. So like I said in the previous problem, we can always add or subtract 2 pi. That's how we can get to any other coterminal co angle. In this case, it may probably makes sense to talk about 6 pi over 3 
since we need to have the same denominators. So if I start subtracting 29 pi over 3 and start subtracting 6 pi over 3, I'd get to 23 pi over 3, not good enough, uh, 17 pi over 3, still too big, 11 pi over 3, I'm just subtracting 6 pi over 3 each time. That's still no good. 5 pi over 3. Ooh, that rings a bell. Yeah, if I subtract one more time, I'd get to negative pi over 3, and I don't want the negative. So this is the winner. This is the angle that's in our unit circle. Okay, so this problem really turns into the cosine, cosecant excuse me, of 5 pi over 3. Okay, so let's talk about where that is. 5 pi over 3. When somebody says pi over 3, I know I'm talking about these guys. Right? All the pi over 3s are there. 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. Hey, there's 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 is right there, and that is just a little bit with the x. So that's a little 1 half. And then the long on the y, and it's negative. Negative square root of 3 over 2. Which of those two coordinates am I really interested in? Well, the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. The reciprocal of the sine value. So the sine value is right here, the y coordinate, right? So the sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. So I need to take the reciprocal of that, which ultimately is just multiplying or just just flipping the thing. It's just going to be negative 2 over the square root of 3. Just take this value and flip it. I like to keep the negative, of course, up in the numerator. And then when I rationalize this, I'll have negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. I'm absolutely fine with your going straight to the final answer. If you need to multiply and show that work, square root of 3 and square root of 3, that's great. Negative 2 square root of 3, of course, up top, and positive 3 in the denominator. But hopefully you've done this enough times to realize that really all you're doing is taking the radical, attaching it to the numerator, and then changing it just to the radicand, and then you're finished. Okay, so that was a little bit more of an involved problem because, one, we had to deal with the angle and get it down to an angle that we know from the unit circle. Once we found that and found the sine, uh, the sine uh, value, we needed to understand that it's the reciprocal for the cosecant. So we had to flip it upside down, and we had to rationalize. So there's a lot going on in that one. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and we'll practice this more in class. Oh, thank you very much. You're too kind. See ya.